Hey there and welcome. We are so glad that all of you are joining us today. It's the weird season um, in between Christmas and into New Year, but we're not stopping here on the show. And today I'm thrilled to have with us uh, Randy Molland, and he's joining us from Canada. He's going to tell us a little bit about himself, but as you're joining us, he is the Chief Giving Officer of Give Big Strategies. Now, Randy and I have already nerded out on a phone call. We connected. We both had really high energy. So I'm excited for this exchange. But Randy's here to talk about corporate philanthropy and how corporate giving and growing success, you know, how that really builds together for our community. So Randy, I'm excited to have more conversation with you. Uh, sad that Julia is missing it, but as I always say, when Julia Patrick is gone, when the cat's away, the mice will play. So I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of The Raven Group. We are so honored to have a growing number of companies supporting us. So thank you, huge shout out of gratitude goes to our friends over at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, National University, uh, also Fundraising Academy, 180 Management Group. Also, thank you to your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. You know, I was speaking with our guest earlier and I mentioned nearly 1,000 episodes and here's where you can find all of them. This is my Vanna White moment. So, streaming broadcast as well as podcast. And then if you have your phone near you, which I'm sure we all do, go ahead and scan that QR and you'll get the app downloaded onto your phone. And you will know in just a couple hours later today that today's conversation with Randy has been uploaded in live. So, okay, Randy, I am thrilled to have you here. Um, you gave me, you know, your personal cell number. So I even texted you this morning was like, Hey, jump on my friend. I'm excited. So for all of you watching, uh, listening and joining us today, again, thrilled to have with us, Randy Molland, chief giving officer at give big strategies. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm fired up for this. And uh, like you said, we have just had such great conversations already that uh, yeah. I think we're going to bring a lot of a lot of energy today and uh, hopefully give a little bit of education uh, and a topic that's not talked about as much in maybe your space, but uh, how, how businesses and nonprofits can start coming together and creating a win-win scenario. Absolutely. Uh, so excited for this. So tell us a little bit about Give Big Strategies and let's like, what is your title? How do you get a chief giving officer title. What does that look like? Yeah, I'll give you a, a quick synopsis of the background. So I was in real estate investing uh, at a young age. I started when I was 25 and had a lot of success in it. I got caught up in the hustle culture and the uh, wanting to get rich quick scheme and just grinded so hard through my mid twenties um, that I ended up having a non-epileptic seizure by the time I was 28 because my body couldn't keep up with the uh, the stuff I was going through. And I had some trauma. I had lost one of my best friends uh, earlier in the years and things like that. And so uh, I came out of that experience and said, there's got to be a better way of doing business. Clearly building it to get rich wasn't serving me. And, uh, you know, going through losing some close friends, I realized that I didn't want to wait until I was, you know, 50 to retire. So there had to be a better way. And that's when I heard a statement that said, if you want to make a million dollars a year, build a business that does 2 million, give a million dollars away, and you'll be the happiest millionaire on the planet. And I was like, that's it. That's what I'm committed to. So uh, I took my real estate portfolio and I started donating $10 per door per month from my real estate portfolio. So our five plex donated 50 bucks a month and 10 plex donated a hundred bucks a month and so on and so on. But it was passive reoccurring revenue for the nonprofits that we were donating to. And they kept telling us, wow, this is really cool, Randy. Like we're making consistent revenue. We can actually start planning. Like this actually really helps us out a lot because although it's not a large amount of money you're donating right now, as this scales and grows and as you donate, we can account for that money coming in. So I'm like, this is a really cool concept. So we started doing that in every business we had, every we touched, we added a giving initiative uh, so that we could support charities. And that's when we realized that the bigger we went, the more we could give, we need to go big to give big. So that's become our hashtag and our movement. And that was around 2018, 2019 that we were doing that. Fast forward to 2022, I launched my own podcast called the Go Big to Give Big Podcast. Had some really cool conversations with people around how giving and business go together. 
fast forward to 2023, and this is where I created the uh, chief giving officer, was I ran a mastermind of 50 entrepreneurs that all paid me and said, I want to learn how to add giving initiatives into my business. And we ran that mastermind. And at the end of the six months, after spending one-on-one -on -one time with them, speaking with them, doing all the trainings, everything, I stood at the front of the room and I said, who here has officially added a giving initiative to their business? And only about 10% of the people raised their hands. And I was like, what, are you guys kidding me? You paid me. I just spent so much time. I just yeah, spent so much happened? energy. Like, <laughs> what's going on here? And so I started doing research and finding out why. Why didn't they add the giving initiatives? And that's when I realized that as soon as I gave them the advice, like any entrepreneur, they would go back to their work and there would be fires and things to put a, uh, to deal with and, and employees and all this stuff. And the giving just got pushed down on the list. And so I was like, well, this is kind of hard. Like you'll pay for a, you know, CFO. Like if your accounting was messed up, you wouldn't just put it down to the bottom of the list. You would get it done. If you had to deal with some marketing or advertising, you'd put it at the top of your list. So then I realized that these people will go and hire somebody to take care of that stuff. And that said, well, if you're going to hire a fractional CFO to run your finances, or you're going to hire a fractional COO to fix your operations, why wouldn't they hire a fractional chief giving officer to manage all of their giving initiatives? And so that's where the, uh, the I, I coined the term a fractional chief giving officer. And uh, as I started to build that out, I created a consulting company called Give Big Strategies, uh, where we basically go into organizations and build out their whole philanthropic initiatives for them. And then we go and actually take it one step further, because as you know, uh, choosing a charity is like choosing a Netflix series. You don't even know where to start or which one to pick. And so we go in and we actually find out what buckets they want to support. And then we go find the nonprofits. We pair them together. We build the relationships. We make everything happen for them all while they just run their business and don't have to do anything on the back end. I love it. You are speaking, I want to say my love language. So <laughs> this is just amazing. Now, again, another compliment. Let's get super nerdy because there's a stat here you're going to throw out. And for those of you listening, it's 89%. 89% of consumers are more likely to buy from a company that gives. Tell us more about that. Because as you mentioned your mastermind, I'm thinking, why weren't these entrepreneurs making that happen, knowing that 89% of consumers are more likely to buy. Yeah, it's great question. And, and so this is like my favorite thing. I love geeking out on this. So we're going to yeah. get excited here. Um, so I, once I started finding out about a lot of this stuff, I started doing a lot of research. And there's a lot of studies out there that show that consumerism is trending in the way that they want to see where companies are spending their dollars for good. Right. They want to start seeing how are you serving humanity? How are you doing good in the world? And the way of the greedy capitalist is going away. Right. Somebody that I think I think in my belief is that in 20 years from now, we're going to look back and say, wow, I can't believe you ran your company for pure greed and profit of yourself. Right. Well, it's, it's already starting. Right. Like that narrative yeah. is already started. So I started finding the statistics out and in a cone consumer report from 2019, I think it said they they tested a bunch of people and they said 89% of consumers are more likely to buy from or be associated with a brand that has a giving initiative to it. Well, I thought, well, that's pretty easy. And that stat gets even deeper as you go into millennial females are 93%. Like it breaks it down into the categories. Millennial females, 93% more likely to uh, work or, or buy from or work with a brand that has a giving initiative to it. There's a, a, a ton of stats. I can say you're four and a half times more likely to get recommended, 80% uh, more likely to have your brand remembered in what you're doing. 93% uh, of your employees are more likely to stay if you have a volunteering or giving initiative that you do as a team. Like there's unlimited stats. And so I'm out here saying, if those are in the 80 to 90% and I'm in business and I know how important just getting a 1% a advantage is in right. this space. Well, imagine if you and I have the same businesses, we sell the same product. I have a giving initiative. I'm going to take 89% of the consumers away from you in the free market over to my brand. And then we're going to be able to go not only make more good, but sell more products, which is going to make more money. And then it's just a repeatable pattern. And I, this is my favorite part. I get to buy myself happiness. This is something <laughs> that I talk a lot about is that when I was going through my burnout phase and when I went through it was building business didn't excite me anymore, right? I, I got burnt out trying to just grind to make more money and more money wasn't making me more excited. But when I started supporting kids in Kids Sport Victoria for every $300, put one kid through sport, 
all of a sudden going and buying 30 units meant that I got to help 12 kids a year. So it was like, I got to go buy 30 units tomorrow. And all of a sudden the impact drove me. And wow. so now when I can start helping businesses get driven by the impact of how the impact can actually make a difference in their business, and it'll actually scale and grow their revenues on the back end, that's when it gets really fun and really exciting. Okay. Impact. That we mentioned, I mentioned to you earlier in the green room chatter. And for those of you that have joined us, I'm so glad you're here. Um, Uncharitable, right? That is Dan Pilata's, uh latest movie that has been released. And it's not out in most theaters uh, yet, but I want everyone to see it because as I first, I, I made a mistake and said that, you know, how he defines philanthropy is changing, but that's not true. The perception of how we see philanthropy and you hit the nail on the head, Randy, impact. It really comes down to impact. Um, okay, so bear with me because I have a curveball question. Yeah. There are so many charities. In fact, in the U.S., and I know you're in Canada, so I don't know those stats, but in the U.S., there are 1.8 million registered nonprofits. And I know you do a lot of work, you know, with, with the yeah. U U.S. Um, entrepreneurs and businesses. Is there a certain charity mission alignment that you see greater success? For instance, you mentioned children, right? It Like, is that where you see the greatest success or is it, it really doesn't matter as long as we have a charitable alignment. It's, it's 50, 50. A lot of it actually comes down to the way that we market it. It comes down to your passion behind the charity that you want to support. Okay. So mm -hmm. it doesn't come down to part of the consumerism depends on, you know, if I'm going to go support, uh, you know, a, a bigger organization like the Red Cross, a lot of people have bad associations to that type of big, huge organization. So a lot of people might not have the same feeling as if I go and support maybe a more local organization that we have. So there are some differences there, um, but the actual causes that you're supporting are truly dependent on how you support it. Okay. I can sit here and say, I'm into child sex trafficking and supporting those nonprofits. We well, might be like, ah, I don't want to do that. But when I share with you about how I've actually gone down, spent time with the girls, and it makes me sick believing that these five-year-old girls don't even have a place to stay. They need food. They need shelter. They need love. They need counseling. Okay. And yeah. all of a sudden, when I can explain that, and then when I say to you, and every time that we go and sell X amount of stuff in our company, we're able to help one child for a month. And that means so much to me because I've been there and I've seen those children and I know how horrible it is. And I really want to make a difference. Now I'm able to say that in a different way that brings light to that charity that you're like, ah, I see his passion. I see why he supports it. I see what he wants to do. So many people will just put in their marketing, their messaging, their branding, just say, and we support, you know, uh, International Network of Hearts with 1% of our stuff. And people are like, what does it even mean? Why do I even care? I don't care about child sex trafficking. But when we start to use our messaging and our marketing to actually explain why we're passionate about it, it doesn't matter what you choose. It matters how you promote it and how you go about supporting it. And like I said, the big difference is just the big red crosses versus the smaller ones. The smaller ones get a lot better response from your marketing because people want to see that versus they know red cross, maybe whatever statistic you want to use, 30% goes to the actual work and impact. That's where some people have that misconception. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for that. Cause I know it was a curveball, and I, I was curious to yeah. know, know your thoughts and what you've seen, you know, really be successful. Let's talk about profit motives and the meaning of work because you are shaking things up here, Randy, and I'm, I'm here for it. I love it. So talk to us more about the profit motives. I, you mentioned, you know, your own real estate portfolio and how that really drove you to say, I was burnt out. But now I'm ready for 30 more because I, I'm so ready to make a difference in my community. Is that really what's driving this? Yeah, there's a huge, huge, huge shift right now. There's, you know, everyone went through that hustle culture phase. And then through, you know, the pandemic, everyone felt very exhausted and burnt out. And people are coming into the business being like, why am I even doing this anymore? What's even the point? I'm, I'm you know, maybe I'm making a few hundred grand, but why? why? Like, I'm, I'm done. I'm burnt out and exhausted. So those are the people that were going in and saying, well, what if we started going and attaching a charitable giving initiative to your business? And now when I'm standing there telling you, hey, do you want to make 100 grand a year? Do you want to make 500 grand a year? And you're like, I don't know, 100 grand is fine for me. And I said, but what if we went to 500 grand and you were able to go put 40 kids through child sex trafficking that's super meaningful to you? All of a sudden, their posture changes. They sit up, they're excited. They're like, 
That'd be so cool. I was like, cool. We have to rebuild your business and get you re-excited and reignite about creating profit because the more money you make, the bigger you go, the more you can give and the more kids you can help. Well, now they're driven by the impact they can make, not by the profit that they're trying to come from. And when we start driving by passion, purpose, and meaning, that's when people actually want to take action and do things, right? When, when there's something greater than yourself, you actually go do it. And so then I kind of laid the line of like, so also I want you to know that if you don't go after this $500,000 for say versus the $100,000, think of the 40 kids that you're going to let down that you didn't just help, that you have the ability to, you have the skills and you have the knowledge to take your business to that next level, but you choosing not to, you're also choosing not to support those kids. And that every time just gets people going, oh my God, okay, I'm in, let's do this. How does it work? And so- They throw um, the towel in and they're like, I have to do better. I have to and, do different. <laughs> and that's what we're looking at business differently. We're looking at capitalism differently. We're looking at business. Like if we have the ability as entrepreneurs to create more revenue tomorrow and make a bigger business and do that kind of stuff for our own personal greed, it might not drive us, but for a way bigger impact and cause, imagine what the collective of entrepreneurs that just started adding a little bit of giving initiatives to it, nonprofit donating is slowly dripping a little bit from what I've seen statistics through some of the um, resources that I've read. And we're coming in to say, well, instead of just going out of your pocket and going to everyday um, people, right? Uh, across the board, everyday homeowners and just being like, hey, what can you donate? And you get $10. Why don't you go to organizations and businesses as nonprofits and say, hey, what if we aligned together, marketed together, supported each other, and you donated a portion of every sale you did and it came to support us. So it's reoccurring revenue. And now you have a win, win, win. Nonprofits are making consistent more revenue. Organizations are selling more and making more profit because 89% of consumers would rather do it. And it's a win, win, win because they have more passion and purpose and everyone aligns. Yeah. It, to me, it's a total win, win, win. And I love that you said, you know, it's really not about the mission itself. It's really about the passion that we hold for that mission. Um, talk to us, Randy, more about how, you know, how businesses can engage their staff to give and give big. So we're not just talking now the owner of the business, we're talking about their staff. So what have you seen by way of success for businesses engaging their staff in this? Yeah, I got two stories I'll share with you because it's easiest to share. So I just uh, brought in a new, I, I put a position out there for a, basically like a director of operations. And uh, we're, you know, not in the startup phase, but we're still growing. And so I just threw it out there for $70,000 a year. And I was just like, hey, I'm looking for someone that can come in, help me build my business for $70,000 a year. The people that applied for that position, when we told them that their job was to help us grow go big to give big and give big strategies around working with nonprofits and businesses to pair them together and do all this stuff. I'm having people apply that are very successful entrepreneurs have built their own startups in a bunch of places that are like, I just want to be a part of this mission. I don't care what it takes. So yeah. I just hired my director of operations. She's built four startups very successfully. She's paid herself a few hundred thousand dollars a year through her companies. She still actively manages and owns percentages of a bunch of those companies. And she was like, Randy, I want to help you build this out. And I was like, so. you realize the position was for $70,000 a year, right? And she's <laughs> like, I don't care about the pay. I care about the impact. Yeah. And, the, and honestly, I probably had five people that I could have chose from that were well overqualified for the position. I was like, this is crazy. I just did the same thing for hiring a consultant for the business. I posted it. And next thing you know, the people that are applying are people that are typically, you know, hundred to $150,000 a year people saying, I don't care what you pay me. I just want to be a part of this impact. So one, we're drawing in a whole different clientele for our hiring and the people that are passionate to be a part of it. My director of operations, she's working like honestly, like 70 hours a week right now to get this thing off the ground. And it's excited and fired up and, and just like in a whole different trench. Like I've never been this excited to build a business. That's one story. On the other side of the story is how do you get your uh, employees motivated if you have the business? Well, my friend ran a sales company and they sold, um, I believe it was like pool cleaning services and lifeguarding services in Texas. And he went in there and said, hey, you know what? Why don't we support uh, feeding children every single day with a portion of our profits. And so for every contract they sold, they knew they're able to feed, I'm gonna use some numbers, I don't know exactly what it is, but a hundred kids. So every contract they sold, they fed a hundred kids. Well, he went into his whole sales room and staff and said, hey, instead of saying, we need to sell 10 more contracts, he said, we need to go feed a thousand more kids. And all of a sudden the sales staff was like, we want to feed a thousand kids. And he said that his numbers were like, it was astronomical, like 200%ed. As soon as he added this giving initiative to it, 
that his sales staff now became about it. And all of his company became about how many kids can we feed? And they ended up feeding like 2000 kids a day in, in Texas with his company. Well, the whole company culture, they would go down, they would serve the food, they would build his uh, retention stayed super high. His numbers skyrocketed, his morale skyrocketed. And he said it was just the best thing he ever did for his organization was talk to them about the impact that they're making in their company. And instead of selling for dollars, they were selling to go help feed more kids. How cool is that? I love that so much. And I, and I can see it being a friendly competition, you know, and yeah. even if there's different sales teams or different divisions or, or what that looks like, um, I love it so much. So my question, another question, yeah. when does a business start this? And I'm thinking really, you know, the entrepreneurial businesses uh, where it yeah. might have one person, it might have, you know, some contractors, like, do we need to wait until we're a multi-million dollar business or when do we implement something like this? That's a fantastic question. It's something I ask every single guest that comes on my show. Do you oh, think okay. entrepreneurs should start giving from the beginning of their business or wait till they've had some success and had some money and then go from there? And I would say 95% of the people all say the exact same thing that if you don't give when you have a dollar, you won't give when you have a hundred thousand, right? If you don't give 10 cents on the dollar, you won't give $10,000 on a hundred thousand and you won't give a hundred thousand dollars on a million. And Tony Robbins talks a lot about this and it's one of my favorite things. Um, he says, uh, give when you have nothing because then when you have something, you get rid of the scarcity mindset, right? Yep. So when you, when you start giving, even when you have nothing, you get rid of your scarcity mindset. So it starts building the abundance mindset, even if you're, giving. So uh, I love explaining it this way. I love thinking of like a box full of water and it's got a faucet on the bottom of it. And that's your giving faucet. So if you fill that bucket full of water of sales or revenue, eventually it starts overflowing. You don't really, you know, it's, it's, you're not putting new stuff in, you're not putting new water in because it's getting stale and it's there. If you open that faucet of giving, you've now started to stream out the bottom. Well, the universe, God, whoever you believe in is just going to start pouring more water into you because he knows that you're a good servant with the money. He doesn't care how much you give. He cares that you give. Right. right. We call it the law of reciprocity. You can call it whatever you want, an abundance mindset. I like the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity says once you give something, you will get. So if you start opening that faucet and giving, doesn't matter how much, it just says that you give all of a sudden you will start getting on the other end and you'll get all this new water flowing in because everyone wants to be a part of supporting you and doing that space. So I encourage everyone, I don't care if it's $1 or $100, 1000 10000 just start because that builds the muscle of giving, like going to the gym. You don't go start curling 50 pound weights to grow your biceps. You know, you might start with five pounders and work your way up. Just start with building the muscle of giving and getting into that space. Because what will happen is it'll trigger endorphins in your brain and you'll start feeling like, wow, that was kind of cool. Even though it wasn't a big impact, I want to do a little bit more. I want to yeah. do a little bit more. And then it continues to grow and you start feeling really great about it. And then you start varying it. Maybe you donate a little bit of your time. Maybe you hire somebody that's, you know, maybe not as qualified, but you can support them. Uh, maybe they have some sort of health issues or something and you can actually hire for that. So there's so many different ways that you can give inside your organization, but it's about starting. And I will say one other thing is that uh, I do this with every single client, like a hundred percent of my clients, every time they come in, they say, cool, Randy, we want to start doing this and then we can start growing this. And then once we get this, we can actually start working this nonprofit. Next thing you know, we can do this. And next thing you know, we're going to be donating a hundred thousand dollars a year. We're going to have all of our employees. And it's like, that's great, but you have to start because sometimes you start building this so big that it becomes too big to start. The goal gets too big and then you just don't know what to do. So we actually very simplify it. And most times when we go into organizations, whether they're making 500 grand a year, or 5 million a year, we start by saying, what is the simplest thing you can give today? Do you want to start giving 10% off one product? That's it. We just start with one simple product and we just start. And then we scale and grow over the year. Yeah. This is so inspiring. So for everyone watching and listening, you know, really what, what I just took away, final answer is start the same day you start your business, right? Like to really build that uh, mentality of giving and receiving. And I also believe, Randy, that money is energy, right? It's meant to come. It's meant to go. It's meant to stay in flow. Um, and just quick story, you know, for me, I, I love abundance. I love prosperity. I love that mindset. 
And I still catch myself at times feeling scarcity, feeling not enough, feeling like, oh gosh, this month is going to be tight. And so when I feel that, what I do, and I love this because it's all about your business and what you help others do, I typically go to a wish list on um, an underprivileged school, you know, and I will send something that's on their wish list. They have no idea who I am. I have no idea what classroom it's going to, but I know that I'm giving and I'm switching my energy as soon as that happens, right? And it doesn't have to be a hundred thousand dollars. It doesn't have to be a thousand dollars. It doesn't have to be a hundred, you know, it's just the act of giving, which is what I love so very much. Your business is about this you know, um, and, and what you're doing. So I love engaging the staff in this mentality, because as you said, you know, it's not, it then became, it's not about the profit and loss. It's about the children. It's about the families we're feeding and, and those that we're serving in our community. So I am on board for this movement, Randy, and I can't wait to see what happens uh, next year. Yeah, we're very excited about it. And, and just, you know, like, like this holidays, we bought a flight for somebody that's in need. It's called Give a Mile, incredible organization, nonprofit. Yeah. And we supported them. And we bought a flight for someone to go back home uh, through the holidays, go see their family in hospice. And instead of me just doing it um, and, and not sharing it with my team, I, we did it. And I messaged my team and said, hey, team, here's the person that we're going to sponsor. Here's the flight we're going to do. This is what it looks like. Do you guys agree with me? And, and so I gave them that opportunity. Of course, they agreed. They said, yeah, this is amazing. So we right. sent the money and we got a nice note back that said, hey, Randy, thank you so much for doing it. This is the family you supported. This is the flight. This is what it means. And this is the note that person said. And I took that and I sent it to my team and said, hey, team, this is what we did. We yes. did. And all of a sudden, they were sending me messages like, oh, my God, I'm crying right now. This is so amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Well, now when we start growing the business, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to be so excited to be like, Randy, what's the next thing we got to do? Yeah. How do we get there? I'm like, okay, guys, well, we got to make a little bit more money to get there. Great. Well, what do we have to do? Again, they're motivated by a whole different process. So I include my team and everything we do. I always use the words we and our team and we did this. It's not me. It's our team. And uh, it's just been so great to watch and grow uh, with the organization. Well, thank you for joining us today. You know, all about uh, the spirit of giving, the season of giving, and here we are. For those of you that are inspired like I am and want to know more about Randy and what he's up to with Go Big to Give Big, check out his website. It is givebigstrategies.com. He's up to some big things, as you've seen, and I'm just so excited to have you on, uh, Randy, to share more about this and then you know, to be with you, to witness as, as you move forward. Um, Julia Patrick, thanks for letting me have this one-on-one -on -one conversation with Randy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd. We also want to say thank you to our amazing presenting sponsors, which include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. So Randy, I guaranteed all of these companies also give back, right? <laughs> and yes. What that looks like for, for our community. So for all of you that have joined us today, I know it's a weird time. Again, as I had mentioned earlier, anytime between the holidays and the new year, it's just kind of like, what day is it? But we're glad you're here. Uh, Randy, so thrilled to have you here. Again, I know you and I nerded out on a, a quick phone call, uh, which went by lightning fast, just as today's conversation. So again, thank you for joining me, for all of you that joined us today. And as we end today's conversation, we are using the same mantra we have since day one. And we invite you to stay well so you can do well. Thank you, Randy.